Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement guide and this time we are getting it all in the world after. This was developed by Burning Sunset, published by Pixel Heart and is usually available for £8.39-$9.99 uh, and obviously what we could do here is just move the text there for, and the voice if you want from French to English or if you prefer it in French, whichever one it is. So anyway, this plays like a sort of um, point-and-click adventure game, but with a bit of FMV in it as well. So uh, yeah, it's it's a genuinely quite a it's a very entertaining game. Uh, but basically, it's set during uh, pandemic lockdown in France, but not is all what it seems. As uh, our main protagonist here, uh, Vincent, gets chased by a monster, but it'll all become it. it it'll all be good. You, you'll know. You'll see. We're gonna see. So achievements anyway. Uh, there's a bunch for, obviously, just doing certain things in the game, in the story. Um, we're going to save at certain points in order to minimize the playlist, but still, uh, the playthroughs, but it still only should take uh, less than an hour. So, with that being said, then, let's do it. And, of course, what we could do then is we are going to go to the start, because there's no need for options. Uh, you can fiddle around with the subtitles and stuff. In the options if you want, but that is completely up to you. So you can go ahead and hold the Y button. That will skip the majority of cutscenes and dialogue. And then you can press the A button on certain bits of dialogue like this in order to just skip it. So that's what we'll be doing a lot through the game. Um, just be doing that. Obviously, left stick to move. So the first thing we are going to do here is on the left-hand side, right next to old Vin Vincenzo, is press the A button here on El Masco. So we're going to turn into... Uh, not quite Jim Carrey's The Mask, but still. Um, go all the way to the right. You can see the arrow. That'll point us into the kitchen. Again, pressing and holding the Y button on any little scenes, we'll skip it. But we're going to pick up our phone. And we're going to go do 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 Going to play some Simpsons Tapped Out. Maybe some Football Manager. You know, something, something good. Uh, grab the juice. Have a little juicy drink as well. And I'm actually playing Football Manager as Manchester United at the minute since we just about scraped through against Coventry City in the FA Cup semi-final today. That was embarrassing. Uh, so grab a rusk, munch on that, and then we should be all good. Uh, so now we can uh, go to the right again in order to go back into the main sort of area here and then interact with the door on our left. And there's going to be a little envelope and it's going to be like, oh my god. And then just go outside again. That'll get us the first achievement, Home Alone, but not quite as Macaulay-ish as Culkin-ish. Right, so what we're going to do now, there's the first achievement. So now we're going to head to the left. Now, what we are going to see as well are these QR codes. Uh, so once we just go to the next scene, so there's going to be 10 of these QR codes that we're going to grab, uh, collect. So what you need to do is press the A button on your phone at the top of your inventory, drag it down, press the A button again, and a small scene will play. Again, as I said, it's always worth watching because it's a very interesting game. Although the English dubbed, uh, it's probably better to uh, play this game in French in all fairness. Because the English dub is uh, hilarious at some points. Um, but once we've done that, then what we can do, that's the first one out of 11 done. But the 11th one will be done at the end of the game. Uh, f show Mark the photos. And then we're going to get the next achievement. So there's basically five wine bottles because Mark is an alcoholic pisshead, which, I mean, nothing else to do in uh, during pandemic, was it? So the first bottle of wine is right in front of him. There's two up on the top shelf. Mark is a fine wine connoisseur. A fine wine connoisseur, yes. That's what we call alcoholics these days. So two on the top shelf, and then on the bottom of the shelf, there is another two, totaling five. So once you have interacted with all of those, Mark is such a wino. Again, that is a hangover connoisseur, I think we should call it. Anyway, once you have got the achievement, we can head to the left. There's going to be another QR code on the ground. So make sure to grab your phone, pop, pop your phone down, interact with the QR code. Don't take a picture of Julie because that is an arrestable offence and that makes you a pervert. Welsh Hunter's life advice. Don't be a pervert, okay? Okay, all right. Well, that was some nice advice. Easily done. Okay, so once we've done that, we can now uh, head back to uh, head to the left once more. 
And what we're going to do is we're actually going to interact with these cows. Um, as it turns out, though, just like Manchester United players, they sort of run away from anyone that's coming towards them. Overpaid bunch of fannies. Um, but once you've done that, then uh, we can now head basically straight up. We're going to go to the front of the castle now. So there's going to be a couple of things we're going to do here. Uh, we're just going to go up and up. So up again. And it's a long walk, but there, again, there was nothing else to do in the pandemic, was it? Now, there is the QR code here right in the front of the castle. So make sure to grab this one too. Now, even though these do get collected and they stay collected, you actually have to collect all of them throughout the game. Um, so again, it's always worth just grabbing these all in the one playthrough. So here we go, old Chewy Dewey right there is uh, having a little chat with us, but we're going to go up more towards the castle. So here we are entering the Caswell again. And there's a couple of hallways here. One to the right, one in the middle, one to the left. We're going to go to the left one. First of all, so nip it to the left. Otherwise, you ain't got no bread. And interact with the bush on the right, which is just in front of us. The fantastically trimmed 80s bush, as it were. Because this is what all bushes look like in the 80s. Because France was good at that. Anyway, shut up. Uh, so interact with the suitcase. You must interact with the suitcase where Vince Vincenzo here has a little bit of dialogue. Otherwise, you'll miss out. Well, you won't miss out on anything, but it may be confusing because nobody actually tells you what to do and where to go. Uh, go back and then interact with the middle hallway. And then, once again, there's going to be a cure code right at the top of the screen. So grab your phone again and interact with the Cunus. You're a cutie. The work required a different kind of perspective. I've never been interested. So once the cutie with the dimples has finished talking and we've interacted with everything, let us head back. Now we are going to get a, another achievement. So we're going to head back a couple of times. But when we get back to the cow part, uh, we just need to wait. So we'll head right here. We'll go down once more. And then we, when we get to the screen with the cows, we're just going to wait for around 40 seconds or so. So, yeah, come on, Vincenzi. Right, so do not move an absolute muskel. Uh, we're going to stand here until the Discovery Channel achievement unlocks. Do it again now. You and me, baby, are nothing but mammals, so let's do it like they do it on the... Ah, oh, crap, I messed up the song, sorry. On the Discovery Channel. Getting horny now. You know, everybody knows the Bloodhound Gang. Right. So once we have finally got that one, we're going to go all the way back now to Mark. Here he is, old Mark with the hilariously English dubbed voice. What's that? Big Nache. You don't want to know what that is, boy. Uh, so interact with Mark and then just go through all of the dialogue options. So just go through every single one if. What are you doing? Tidying my garage can. Is your wife not here? Guess she's in town. She's angry with me. I forgot to buy hand sanitizer in the pharmacy's. Do you have any pliers or something to cut a lock with? Damn, bro had one job. Buy some sanitizer since, you know, COVID and stuff. Never mind. Right, so head back to the left. And we are going to go ahead and talk to Julie here, who is so angry she just went off to the left slightly. Um, she's going to be... Oh, fuming. Fuming blood. Right, so as usual in any video game, we've got to do favours in order to get one corkscrew, even though we could, could have probably just nipped the shop. Or well, there's probably one in our house. Anyway, uh, so go to the right. Go to the right again. So we are back to our house and trousen. And incredibly, there is a nice... Full bottle of vodka just been dumped outside our house. 
How very dare you! I'm going to confiscate this. Mmm, delicious. Uh, so, and... but <laughs> There's another ten bottles of beer on the wall. Another ten bottles of beer. So once we get inside our house anyway, uh, right in this room is the sanitizer. It's an empty bottle. Even though it looks pretty full right there, but still, apparently it's empty. I'll go and make some sanitizer. Right, there we go. Um, Wish-looking Gary Neville. So head to the right, back into the kitchen. What we're going to do for the cocktail achievement is use the vodka on the juice. And apparently, old Wish Gary Neville here says, never in the morning. And how wrong has he always been? Bro, you're in France, just go nuts. Anyway, apparently we're not doing that. So grab the aloe vera next to your laptop on the left-hand side of the kitchen. Aloe vera. Something else. And then you can go ahead, use the vodka and the aloe vera. Just, um, again, press the A button on the vodka and then the A button on the empty bottle. And then do the same with the aloe vera. Vera, she gets right to us. Uh, that's the DIY expert as well. And then we can head all the way back to Julie. So go to the house, go to the left a couple of screens and then give Julie the old sanitizer. Hopefully she hasn't got no cuts, cause uh, man, that vodka's gonna boing. Here, I found some sanitizer. Great, Mark wouldn't have done that. Here, your cork. So you can speak to old Julie-ness if you want, but we're not going to bother. Sorry, Jules. Sorry, me, Julie. Uh, but we're just going to see you later. <clears throat> Alligator, and we'll see you in a while. Crocodile. That's the only way I know how to differentiate alligators and crocodiles. So go back to Mark. Give Mark the corkscrew, and she, he's going to be like, No way! Because he sounds like a... He sounds like a diarrheaed up Cartman. Yeah, yeah, like like Cartman if he's uh, Eric Cartman from South Park if he's throwing up or something. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Um, so now what we're we gonna do? Now we've got the players. We're gonna head all the way left, past the cows, all the way up to the castle, and we're gonna go ahead and open up the suitcase. <gasps> dun dun dun. Ah, but before we open the suitcase, we are going to make a save. Now, obviously, on your screen, you'll be able to see on the bottom left-hand corner where it says Menu, we are going to make a save right here. So do not open the suitcase just yet. We're going to make a save here. So press Menu, go to Save, and then obviously in New Save. Now, the reason we are doing it here, I'll tell you in just a minute. Um, so we're going to use the players, and he's going to be like, hey, come on. Come on, because I, I can't. I don't know if Vinch, the, the, the English dub is supposed to be an Englishman or an American man. Um, so with that one done, with the suitcase, open it up, and the code is always going to be the same. It's one three seven four. So one three seven four. Now, I actually tried making a save here at this next point where it tell where it asks us if we want to take the gun or not take the gun. Um, for this, uh, we're going to get the true and good endings first, so we are going to not take the gun. So make sure to not take the gun. Okay, so do not take it, and then that's all good. But I actually tried to save it there, and then for some reason, it wouldn't open up the menu, it, it would just automatically take the gun. So that is why I saved just before it, because that was a pain in the old behind. So, for not taking the gun, we'll get the pacifist achievement. Once we have skipped this cutscene, we're going to be face to face with the monster that's under my bed. Jesus Christ. Right, press the button. It's basically going to be a button which is um, turns from night to day and from day to night, which comes in handy, huh? He's like, oh my god. I can't believe it. That monster. That, <laughs> that monster. That's, uh, well, that's what I look like on, as soon as I wake up. I need to look around the village. But bald and handsome, of course. Okay, so what we're going to do now, just in between the two buildings, we can actually go up north now. Julius is nowhere to be seen. So we're going to head north, and on the right you can see another QR code, so get your phone smashed on that. Should be number 5 out of 10.
Ay, 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 ay. We've tried so many solutions. So... So, once you've listened to grown-up Eric Cartman there, what we're going to do is repress the remote control again. And obviously, again, that's going to turn it to night. This time, we can speak to old Larold. And again, we're going to go through all of the dialogue options with Larold. So, get through it. Yes, of course. You haven't noticed anything strange in the area lately, have you? The townhouse again. Does that ring any bells? Who owns the estate? A really rich elderly couple. They don't... There's hardly anyone about in this town. It's just a small village. We prefer... You don't know another way in, do you? Other than the main door? I don't really know which... Okay, so once you've done that, go ahead, press the remote control red button again. I'll just call it the red button. Um, we are going to go back to daytime, and then we're going to head back to the left, then to the right, until we can speak to Mark again. And we're going to get another achievement related to old Mark, the old Eric Hartman voice from Wish. So speak to him, and uh, talk about the Tannhauser Gate, and then what you're going to do, and it's actually, I love the way he says, you new but you're going to keep saying opening the doorway and then he's going to say uh so every, it's going to be come on and please and all that stuff so just keep interacting with the same top dialogue option until the achievement never give up unlocks new please no give it to me let it go Here we go, we're never gonna give you up, I'm never gonna let you down. I'm very singy in this walkthrough, aren't I? Okay, so what we'll do is press the red button again, that's gonna turn to night, and for some reason, Mark, uh, well, he doesn't close his garage, so that comes in handy for us. We're gonna interact with the shelf, we're gonna have a little looky around, and, ah, oh, what's that? The crowbar! So, we wouldn't have to resort to stealing if you just lent it to us, so, uh, anyway. Uh, now we can push the red button again. And, well, we could do it later, but I'm only doing it now just to show Mark that we stole the crowbar. <laughs> Here's your crowbar. <laughs> oh, no, never mind. It's in my inventory now, boy. You go back to stop being sick, Mr. Cartman. All right, so anyway, we're going to head back up north. Um, and we are going to use the crowbar to open the gate. So, crowbar... Open up the gate. I literally don't know why he just can't climb over the obvious low walls either side of the gate. Um, and that probably requires more than just a crowbar. But anyway, we're in. We get the Freeman did it first achievement. And then we can speak to Larry. He's um, And apparently he's just like, How are you? Oh, I'm a professional employee now. Sorry, but... Okay, so what we'll do, we will uh, press the red button again. And you can tell when Larry's all cool because his jacket's open and he's looking all... There you go. Anyway, there's another QR code right here on the van. So use your phone on the QR code and then go ahead and speak to Larry again. Things take time to set up. We're facing problems we didn't expect. Is it still okay for you to come with me? Uh, yes, of course, but I've got a problem. I can't... Bruh, come on, how do you lose your damn phone in this day and age? Okay, so once we're back in the daytime, interact with the barn on the right, we will find the phone, and then we've got to press the red button again in order to go to the night, and then you can hand... <laughs> so yeah, for some reason... Whatever, whatever the difference is, you can't hand him his phone in the day. You've got to hand him his phone in the night. Why it makes a difference? I don't know. Oh, thank you. Now we can go. Are you sure it's not too dangerous to go at night? So once that's done, we are going to speak to Julie. We are obviously going to go through all of the dialogue options. He stayed in the village. He's sorting his things in the garage. Where's your son? I don't see him. 
He's inside, playing with my parents. I'm trying to get to the townhouse at gate, but I'm lost. Can you take me there? No, sorry. I have to stay here, but I can give you a map. That'd be good. Can I ask you a favor first? Can't say I'm surprised. The little one got his kite stuck in a tree. Bro, you can't be asking where people's kids are. That makes you look wrong. Anyway, uh, interact with the bow on just to the right of where Vincenziono was. And there's going to be an arrow just to the left of where Julianus is. And here it is. So that's the first arrow. We actually need two arrows because instead of, again, instead of just climbing up or throwing something, um, we're trying to shoot the arrow down for whatever particular reason. So uh, combine the arrow with the bow to make the bow an arrow. And we're going to use the remote control. Again, we're just going to turn it into night. And then what we're going to do is try to shoot our shadow. That is for another achievement called... Shatnyaga, which obviously means shoot your shadow. I don't know. What does that mean, my German enthusiastic friends? Shatnyaga? Sounds like a Shatnyaga. But anyway, uh, interact with the phone. Use the QR Use the phone and the QR code just at the top of the building. This should be number 7 out of 10. There we go. It says 11, but like I said, as long as you get all the QR codes in one playthrough, the 11th will automatically unlock at the end of the game. So that's number seven done. So enter the cellar, the ominous looking cellar. Luckily, it's a more omelette than ominous. So happy with that. Uh, we need to switch again to daytime. It is a lot of switching. Again, what we're looking for is an arrow. Uh, for some reason, we can't, we can't get it in the night. So interact with the oil cloth anyway. After the scene, we will get the, <laughs> we will get the next arrow again. Don't know why we couldn't have just found all this in the night, but anyway. Um, so switch to nighttime again. Because we can't get out because the cellar's locked in the day for some reason again. And then we can actually go back out. And then when we get back into the yard area, the garden area, we're going to switch back to daytime. <laughs> Isn't this just a piece of fern? There we go. So we've got two arrows now. So once we are back in the daytime, what we're going to do, we're going to uh, click on the bow and arrow, and we're going to try, and we're going to shove it all the way into the old kite hole. And we're going to miss the first time, so make sure to do it again, and that will get us the kite down. Job done. Right, Spanky Hairy Crutch, that's all done. Uh, now we're actually just going to interact with the map. Um, if you try and choose any dialogue options, we're basically not going to say a thing. Well, well bye. Vincent. Vincent. Come back to me, my love. But anyway, that gets us the X marks the spots achievement. So now there is another QR code on the ground, just to the left of Vincenzo Neroni. Vincenzo Pepperoni, there it is. So grab your phone, this will be number eight. Out of ten. It's right, so next up then we're going to use the crowbar on the trinkets. Not the trinkets, the thickets, sorry. Not the trinkets. Just to the left of Vincenzo Pepperoni. So, uh, again, very, uh, very manly looking swinging right there. But that gives us a stick. So what we're going to do is go to the right side of the screen now. Head up to... Um, uh, a wall, and we're going to use the crowbar again on the axe head. So there's an there's an axe head. I'm only going to axe you this one more time. Put the crowbar on the axe head. Okay. Right. So there we go. So once we have got that one out, again just a random axe head just chilling in the wall. So we'll go ahead and pick that up. We will then combine the axe head with the stick. So don't be an axe hole. Put the axe hole on the stick. And here we go. I mean, it does look extremely flim flimsy, but it's enough apparently to go back to the left screen here, use the axe hole stick on the post, and that's enough just to uh, chop some off, chop off some rope, which we need. The axe broke. Okay, so we're not too far now from the end of the first playthrough, so we're going to interact the rope with the crowbar, 
And then we're going to go back to the right hand side of El Screeneth. Here it is. And then we're going to use the grapple hook now, which we've effectively made with any point on the wall. And that's going to get us over. Jobs done. Now we've got two more QR codes, like I said. So we're going to be grabbing those. The first one, we're going to head north. So just head straight up. Ah! Oh. And when we get to the next screen, the QR code is going to be directly in front of us. So grab your phone and it's going to be on... Where the hell is that thing? Oh, yeah, just on the tree. Right by Vincenza Rooney Rini's hand. So again, that is going to be number nine. And oh, Jesus. Oh, it's Orgasmo, apparently. Well, that's what happens when you, A, either have the best nut job of your life, or two, or B, number B, whatever it is, you have just had the ultimate um, diarrhea explosion. On the toilet, of course, not in your pants. Right, anyway, use the map with your path. <laughs> Sorry, it's just, it's the noise, it's the eyes rolling in the back of the head. Oh, it's a spooky ghost. It's ectoplasm. Uh, so, what we're going to do is use the phone on the QR code, which is going to be all the way on the right-hand side. That is going to be the tenth and final one that we can find. But again, now that we have found them all the way through, the last one will unlock um, at the end of the game, which will effectively get us the true ending as well. Right, so once that's done, that's all good. Now there's a hidden panel on this right-hand side rock, right in the middle of the right rock. So interact with the panel. Then we're going to go ahead and read the text. Prochain ouvertoire pour rotation de surveillance du sur et minuit. Was that French or was that not French? It was pretty much not good French. Still, once you have read it, we're going to go back. Then we are going to use the map on the sky. So just above the right hand side rock. And it's a whole bunch of numbers, which we don't know. So we'll just head back again. And then we're going to use the instructions on the sky as well. So there we go. So with those two done, it just reminds me of the Flash Flood of Colour uh, from Enter Shikari album, in all fairness. So now we're going to do, uh, put the map with the instructions to make instructions and map. Then we're going to go ahead and switch to night time. Then after this, we're going to interact with the sign on the rock, enter the final code, and this is going to be the first ending complete. So the code will be all, all the time, same thing, 632303. So that's 632303. Press enter, go back, and that is going to be two achievements that we're going to grab. The true ending and the good ending. So hooray, everybody loves a good ending. What? No! No! There's nothing left. They burn. They destroy. And there it is then. Log 11 out of 11. That is what we need. So that's good ending and true ending done. So that's happy days. Right. Uh, also, we've unlocked the visual novel, which is a classic, uh, but we're going to do that at the very last. Uh, so don't worry about that. But for now, we will continue. Hopefully you made that uh, save earlier on. So effectively, we've done it there just so we wouldn't have to play the f uh, first 10 minutes going back and forth. So reload, save one. And of course, we are going to open up the suitcase again. So we're going to use the players on the suitcase and the code is remember one three seven four and of course we are this time going to take the gun we're going for the bad endings now so make sure to take the gun and again, we're basically going to be doing a lot of the same stuff that we were doing earlier uh, in terms of having to talk to Larry and doing all that stuff. So here we go, old mummy eyeballs. Press the button again. And then after this, once again, we're going to head north 
and talk to Larry during the night time. Hi, can I ask you a few questions? You haven't noticed anything strange in the area like The town has a gate, does that ring any bells? Who owns the estate? A really rich elder. There's hardly anyone about in this town. It's just a small... You don't know another way in, do you? And when we do this, after we do that, sorry, after we speak to Larry, we're going to um, go to daytime, go to Mark, speak to him, um, ask him about the crowbar, and then switch to the nighttime and grab the crowbar off the shelf when he's asleep but hasn't closed his garage. <laughs> Sneak 100. Does the town of the gate ring any bells for you? Isn't that an opera or something from a film? Do you have anything for opening doorways? Like a key, maybe? Come on, let me borrow it. No. Come on. No. Please. No. Give it to me. Let it go. Speaking of Sneak 100, how's everyone enjoying the Fallout TV series so far? Fantastic, am I right? That's how you do a proper uh, game-to-TV adaptation. The Last of Us was excellent as well. Halo, eh, can sort of uh, take it or leave it. It wasn't too bad, not as horrible as people made out to be, but uh, Fallout is, yeah, personally on another level. It's awesome. Okay, so we know what we're doing here. Um, interacted with the crowbar, and and then uh, we've got to speak to Larry, then speak to him at night, then find his phone in the day, then give him his phone back at night. Yes, it's um, very lots of crap. Is it still okay for you to come with me? Oh, thank you. Where's Mark? He stayed in the village. He's sorting his things in the garage. Where's your son? I don't see him. I'm trying to get to the townhouse gate, but I'm lost. Do you... Can you take me there? No, sorry. I have to stay here, but I can give you... And yes, oh yes, my friendly eyes, we do have to do this bit again. So, grab the bow from the right tree, then the arrow from the uh, left of where Julie's arrow legs are. Pew! And then, of course, we are going to uh, go to the night. It doesn't matter if you combine the bow and arrow now. Obviously, we're going to go into the cellar, interact with the oil cloth. Come back out and then change it to day and then just shoot the kite out of the tree.
Don't tear it, please. Damn, I lost my arrow. Proper marksman, me boy. Oosh. Anyway, of course, next we are going to grab the map. And then we will be back at the area with all the thickets and stuff. That's it. That's it. Anyway, so again, use the crowbar on the thickets. And then go to the right-hand side screen. Use the crowbar on the axe head. Again, we're not being axe holes. We just need that head. <laughs> And then again, use the axe head on the stick, put the axe hole, put the stick right up the axe hole. Go to the left, use it on the post, and then combine the rope and the crowbar, and then use the grappling hook to climb the wall. The axe broke. This time, of course, we can just use the map with the path since we do not need any more QT codes, QR codes. I'm calling you a cutie, you damn cuties. Okay, here we are then, back at the old rock. So, interact with the panel again. Uh, read the text. Now, in just, a f in just a minute or so, we are going to make another save because there are actually two endings, which we... Um, can't get at the same time so uh read the text switch it to night time and after we do this this is where we're going to save the game so don't interact with the gate just yet go down to the menu save the game put it in save number two into the new save slot just in case and there we go so now again examine the sign on the right and the final code as i said will always be the same it's six three two three zero three Now, coming face to face with the monster, you can either shoot yourself or the monster for the two endings. First of all, we're just going to interact with our head, shoot ourself, and that is going to get us the bad ending achievement first. I'm the subject, aren't I? Nothing can happen to me. That's what it says on the suitcase. Let me out. Move aside. Congratulations. I'm confused as to why it's a bad ending, though. In the good ending, you just jump through a hole and disappear. Um, but anyway, uh, continue. And, of course, we're going to uh, go to save two. But in that one, you wake up in the middle of your home, I think. Anyway, so, again, obviously, interact with the sign on the right, 632303. And then, what you're going to do then for the final ending for the very bad ending, apparently, is go ahead and shoot the monster. So make sure to shoot El Monsteroni. Okay, now you thought we were done, huh? But we have one more thing left to do, and that is the visual novel. Now, to be fair, this is some um, this is a W. This is an absolute win from the developers here. Um, so they've basically put the game in as a Japanese style uh, visual novel as well, which is <laughs> genuinely, genuinely super cool. So yeah, so obviously it's the case of you're just going to get. Um, uh, you're just going to get answers to pick and everything, so 
yeah, just like a normal visual novel. But it, it, from what we've played so far, this is very, very cool. So we're going to go ahead, take the mask. You can actually go ahead and take the sanitizer as well. So go ahead, take the sanitizer too. Um, I actually don't do that uh, just yet. I do come back for it later. But go ahead, take that. Go into the kitchen, pick up the phone. And then you can just take a rusk, if you so wish, and just return to the entrance. Now, I'm not sure. We're basically doing the same thing as we've done in the main game. Um, but I'm not sure if choosing every dialogue option is worth it or if something else happens. Anyway, we open the door. We're going to go to the village. Go to the oh, village. We're going to talk to Mark. There he is. He looks pretty decent, <laughs> as a, <laughs> as an uh, as a visual novel character. Uh, so just say, "What are you doing?" And then, "Is there a castle or ruins nearby?" In fact, if you've played the game a few times, you already know sort of what to do and where to go. Um, now, I just tried pacing it as you know, nice and slow slash a bit fast as I can. So hopefully, you can keep up. Um, but yeah. Yeah, it's not difficult at all, this one, especially if you are following along. So, of course, we know what the code is, but uh, this is the only part that was pretty different in this game. We actually have to go back, talk to Julie, uh, choose year the castle was built. She's going to say 1374, 1374. Then we can go back to the castle and put that code in.
And this be it then, guys and girls. This be it the film. I had to finish. This will be the end, sorry. What the hell am I on about film? Um, but yeah, this will be it then. So after you have completed this visual novel, um, you will then get 17 out of 17 achievements. So just want to say thank you so, so much um, for watching, guys and gals. Hopefully you enjoyed the game and the uh, that the guide helped as well. If it did, of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend as well. 
Big shout out as always to my Patreon supporters, my YouTube members, and everyone who has subscribed and to everyone who continues to support me. So thank you so, so much. And I shall see you in the next one, guys and gals. Big love.